Hi, I'd like to show you um, my GIS viewer, um, the data that um, will be suitable for this viewer um, is like an Excel spreadsheet where the X and Y coordinates are given, <coughs> longitude and latitude, um, and then, um, you know, the place names to go with those labels. Um, <coughs> and um, basically, um, you might ask um, why it is that I, um, I still wanted to do this, because there are lots of GIS systems out there. Um, well, you know, um, I'm a computer scientist, and having seen how a lot of the GIS work, I'm not necessarily satisfied with the way things are done. <coughs> um, my thinking is that if, if I applied the principles of computer science, namely data structures and algorithms, um, to what I program, um, it may be possible to get um, better performance out of it. Um, and if not that, at least better, better uh, internal data modeling. Um, because a lot of these um, GIS use table-based databases, such as relational databases. And that may not be the most appropriate thing for um, geographical data. I wrote papers about that. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, here we actually have to go beyond, um, um, you know, particulars such as linked data structures, important as those particulars may be, <clears throat> because there are some other issues that are involved also in processing data and deciding what to display and what not to display. Um, such decisions may have to be made at a very low level in order um, to not waste time, waste processing time. <clears throat> anyway, uh, the data that I'm using um, is actually um, a draft version of a gazetteer um, of the Iberian Peninsula um, prepared by ISU student Scott Pearson. Um, so let's take a look at what I have so far. I call this the Iberian Viewer, August 2011, because that's when I started the project. It's now September 9th. <coughs> um, and here is the draft viewer of draft data that I have so far. Um, yes, it could look better. There's no question about that. The, there are no boundaries or anything like that displayed either. And there's still a lot of label collision. Uh, but I just want to show you the speed at which it operates. Um, let me see. Here's the application. So I'm opening it up. Okay. So here's my... Um, here's my window. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the only control that it has, really. Um, the only... The only um, control that it has is actually this button. Like I said, this is just a draft. What I do is I can read a comma separated values file. And right now I hard coded where the uh, names to be displayed are and where the coordinates are. Uh, but obviously I could change that um, and make those things um, variable so they can be input by the user because not all files have the same things in the same columns. Okay, here the points came up. These are places in um, Spain, and there are two places out in the Canary Islands here, um, down there. So, okay, we shall start. now. I, I programmed my viewer such that um, if the scale <coughs> is too small, uh, then the, the text labels don't show, okay? Um, and so now I'm going to zoom out now. The way I 
program to the zoom out to such that um, the zooming will be centered where the mouse is. So here I'm zooming out, see how fast it goes. <clears throat> and now, um, see the label started to appear when the zooming is five times the original, um, the, the, the original scale. That's how I programmed it. Again, that could be made variable. Now, um, I had to do some work to make sure that the lettering um, doesn't increase in size because you know otherwise it would be the, the letters would be, would, would be too big to read uh, but it may not be the best thing to to make the size um, exactly constant either um, so I can change that however to make the letters grow a little bit as you zoom in but not too much um, note that because this is a a, a draft database um, I'm using. Um, there are interesting things like, you know, <clears throat> uh, two points near each other being named the same. Um, uh, I mean, uh, truthfully, that's, that's okay because, you know, like if you wanted to um, um, say where Pocatello is, um, you might, um, you know, um, one, one, one person might say, oh, it's where, you know, um, uh, center and main streets intersect. Another person may um, put his or her marker somewhere else in town. Um, and so uh, things like that are not resolved in this draft. So as you can see, um, these are two names that probably designate the same town. I could change this easily so that some kind of scale shows here so you can figure out how far these two points are. Um, but anyway, here I am um, zooming back in. And as you can see, the points come back in really quickly. And I can pan, I can pan as well. Um, this works slightly slower, but still pretty quickly. Um, if, <coughs> if there are fewer points left, then this works a lot faster. Um, the reason for this is because um, I do my computing my processing so that the things that will not show on screen uh, simply don't get put onto the um, onto the uh, scene to be displayed um, surprisingly enough the way uh, um, QT does it I, I programmed this on a platform called QT um, anyway, the, the QT is one of the most um, popular platforms around. Um, it's what Google Earth and some other famous programs are based on. But anyway, the way QT does things natively, um, <coughs> funny thing is that whether or not something shows, the appear to be drawing them, um, if even if those drawings are invisible. Um, and I don't quite understand why they do it that way. Because originally, I, I simply put all my <coughs> text on the scene object, um, and I just told it to display just this much. Well, guess what? It took a lot longer to do the panning. Um, but now that I actually um, <coughs> you know, do my own calculations um, and simply not draw things that would be invisible anyway, um, things go faster. Uh, I mean, QT should have done it this way to begin with. Um, maybe there's a way to tell it to do it that way, but I didn't see it in the um, documentation. And uh, that should, that mode of operation should really be the default mode in any case. Um, but it's not in QT. So anyway, I did my own computations. Um, let's see, here is another <coughs> zoom in. Now, with a lot of text, things go slower. See? Um, so that cannot be helped, or at least I don't know how to work around that um, right now. Now, if I zoom in enough, there won't be text anymore, right? And so now panning is fast once again. Um, now, there are lots of things um, I could do to this. I could put the boundary on. 
uh, and see how fast it works. I suspect it will still work fast because I've worked with boundaries um, with Qt before. Um, <coughs> and I could also put um, a topographical image of Spain on here. Um, <coughs> I don't know how that would affect the running time. Um, I may have to rely on how fast Qt works negatively. Uh, we'll see. So those would be the next steps. Okay. All right, then um, let me zoom everything in. There you go. Thanks for listening and viewing.